Hey everyone, welcome back to your math class and lesson 10. Uh, today we are going to be continuing with our algebra unit and we're going to be doing some practice questions involving one variable. So by this point you guys should know everything there is to know about what variables are and uh, when and why we use them. So today we're going to be doing some example problems first with one variable, then some practice problems where you guys are going to do it and then I'm going to give you the answer at the end. Uh, and then we've got some word problems. I've got one example and then two word problems for you guys to try on your own. And we're not really going to touch on two variables in the same problem today, but you might see in the word problems how there could be a use for two variables as well. So let's begin with example number one. Um, so we've got this equation sitting in front of us. We've got, uh, let me get my laser pointer. So we've got 4 multiplied by 2x plus 3 equals 48. Now I want to make a note before I forget that if you've got a number like this 4 right here sitting outside these uh, these brackets, but there's no symbol in between. There's no addition, there's no subtraction, there's no multiplication, there's no division. It means multiplication. So just like when we write, for instance, if we just write x without any number in front of it, that means the same thing as 1 times x or 1x. This is the same kind of idea that you don't have to write in the multiplication sign uh, if you've got something in brackets. Now obviously if you have two numbers and it's not something in brackets, then yeah, you would have to write in the multiplication sign because if you were to do, for instance, like 4 times 8 without writing something in between, it's just going to look like 48, right? So this is a 48, but this is 4 multiplied by this whole thing in brackets. Now hopefully you guys um, are reasonably comfortable with that. And from this point, we will go ahead and try and solve this problem. So what we need to do here is we need to figure out what x is equal to. So uh, first things first, we've got the x is embedded inside these brackets, right? And we need to eventually get the x completely by itself. But if we look at the rules for bed mass, it starts with brackets, then exponents, then division and multiplication, then addition and subtraction. But that's regular bed mass. If we're trying to isolate this x, remember that's what we talked about in the last lesson, we have to go backwards. We have to start with, is there any addition and subtraction that's not inside brackets that I can deal with right now? No. Is there any multiplication or division that's not embedded inside brackets right now? Yes, this 4 multiplied by all of this stuff, that's a multiplication problem. So working through bed mass backwards, we've found a multiplication issue that we can try and undo. Uh, so we'll start with that. There's no division going on here. So what do we have to, so basically what's happening here is we've got this 2x plus 3, you can think of it like one big chunk, one big brick that's got 2x plus 3 written on it, and then we're multiplying that whole thing by 4. Now if you take one big thing and you multiply it by 4 and then you want to undo that, you want to get rid of that multiplication by 4, you divide by 4. So we will divide by 4. So on the left side, the fours are going to disappear, right? Uh, and on the right side, we're going to have this 48 divided by 4, and that's something that we can just solve. So it's something that some of you, if you're really good with your times tables, you'll just automatically know the answer to that. Um, but if you have to do it through like long division or something, that's totally okay as well. With time, you'll get more comfortable with multiplying and dividing by these small numbers, like 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's kind of it. Um, but uh, yeah, so on the left side, the 4s are going to disappear. So we're left with just the 2x plus 3. And because that whole brick of stuff is not being multiplied by anything else, we don't have to write in the brackets anymore. We don't have to say that this 2x plus 3 is being multiplied by something on the outside, so we don't need to encase it in those brackets. So we just write 2x plus 3 kind of normally. And then on the right-hand side, 48 divided by 4 is just 12. So if you had to do that the long division way, that's okay. Uh, a lot of people nowadays, if they learn their times tables at all, they only go up to something times 10. And so this is 4 times 12 gives you 48. So you might not know that, but you, now you know. So now we've got 2x plus 3 equals 12. And this is 
we're just going to do the same steps again. So we look at bed mass, B-E-D-M-A-S, and we start at the bottom, the A and the S, addition and subtraction. Is there any addition and subtraction that we can deal with in this step uh, first? Yeah, and the answer to that is yes, there is. There's this plus three going on here, right? Our X is being multiplied by two, but then it's being added to three. So we can undo that addition of plus three by subtracting three. So that's what I've written in here. And then of course, naturally, whatever you do to the left-hand side, you also have to do to the right-hand side. So we've got a minus three over there as well, which leaves us with just two X on the left-hand side and 12 minus three is nine on the right-hand side. Now you will see that uh, the goal every single step is to make the side that has the X's on it uh, a little bit simpler. Um, if you're not getting rid of something, like if you subtracted a different number here, you'd still have two X plus something or two X minus something. You haven't really made it any easier for yourself. The goal is to remove one piece of the puzzle every single time. So at the beginning, we had this whole big 2x plus 3 times 4. So first things first, we got to get rid of this times 4 going on on the outside. So then it was just 2x plus 3. Now we've gotten rid of the, the plus 3, so now it's just 2x. And so now what we want to do is we want to get rid of that 2. Right now it's x being multiplied by 2, so it's stuck to this 2 through multiplication. So we undo that by dividing by 2. So we get 2x divided by 2 on the left side and 9 divided by 2 on the right side, which means that your final answer will be x is equal to 9 over 2 as an improper fraction because the left-hand side is just going to leave us with x. The right side, 9 divided by 2, that's 9 over 2 or 4.5 as a mixed number or 4.5 as a decimal. So that's it for this example. Hopefully that all makes sense. Now here's another example and now we're starting to up the difficulty a little bit because we're still working with one variable because it's still just the letter x the difference here is that the letter x is showing up multiple times so you might say oh but that's two variables two variables would be two different letters like an x in one spot and then a y in the other spot and those are a different beast they're not impossible to solve they're not that hard to solve but they are a little bit harder to solve than when you've got exactly the same letter showing up again and again. So the first step here to make things easier, remember when we were trying to isolate X in the previous lesson, we wanted to get the X all by itself on one side of the equation, right? So we wanted to have just X equals and then a whole bunch of math on the other side. Now you can do that with this type of question as well, but your very first step before you do any of the bed math stuff for the rest of it, is you want to get all the x's any of these individual terms so like this is a term this is a term this is a term and this is a term you want to get any terms with an x so that's this one right here and this one right here you want to get those all on the same side of the equal sign doesn't matter if it's the left side or the right side not not our problem just pick a side uh, usually I like to keep the x positive um, so you'll find that like if I want to get rid of the 4x from the right hand side then I can subtract 4x right and so if I subtract 4x on the right side then I also have to subtract 4x on the left hand side and if I do 6x minus 4x x can be whatever right x could be apples um, six apples minus four apples is going to leave me with two apples, but that's positive two apples. And I just like to have the, the thing with the X's in it to have a positive number in front of it. So I would choose to do it this way. I'll subtract four X from both sides so that we get rid of all the X's on the right hand side of the equation. Cause this plus four X and this minus four X are going to cancel each other out. So we're going to be left with just an eight on the right hand side. And we're going to have 6x minus 4x, which is 2x, plus 2 on the left-hand side. So we've got this, just looking at the black, we've got this 2x plus 2 that came from this step up here. 6x minus 4x is 2x, and then the plus 2 just comes on down. And then over here, all the x's disappeared, and we were left with just an 8. So now, looking at just the black text on the left hand side we want to get the 2x by itself so we go through our bed math steps 
in reverse. So we see we have this addition problem of this plus 2 that we want to get rid of. So we subtract 2, and whatever we do to the left side, we also have to do to the right side. So we get 8 minus 2 over there. And so we end up with 2x equals 6. And at this point, you might very clearly see, oh, you know, that clearly tells me what x is equal to. If, if so, great. If not, not a problem. And we can go through the steps one more time. We want to get rid of that multiplication by 2. So we divide by 2 on both sides, and we're left with x equals 3. So hopefully that makes sense for all of, or for both of the examples. We didn't do more than two. Um, but you guys have seen some examples last lesson now and this lesson. So I think this is a good time for you guys to do some practice problems. So here are five questions on the screen. You'll see that uh, some of them, quite a few of them, have got the X showing up multiple times in the same line. So I'll give you a few seconds to uh, pause the video and then you can take a few minutes to work on these problems before I show you the answers. All right, so here are the answers to those practice questions. And I hope you guys got the same answers. We got x equals 4 for the first one, x equals negative 2 for the second one, uh, x equals 2.5 or 2.5. Uh, or 5 over 2, perhaps, um, for the third one, x equals negative 2.5 for the fourth one, and x equals 1 over 30 for the fifth one. Now, if you wrote your answers as fractions instead of decimals, that's okay. Decimals instead of fractions, that's okay. I just kind of picked whatever made the most sense for me. What I would like you to do and to get in the habit of doing with these kinds of questions is I'd like you to check that you got the right answer. So I want you to, you go through all the work. So if we just take one of these as an example, right? I want you to go through the work and say, uh, okay, so I've done all my work. I've gotten an answer of X equals four. Fantastic. But then what I want you to do is I want you to go back to the original problem and I want you to plug in a four anywhere that you see an X. Now, of course, that means that in this five X, I don't want you to make that a 54. I want you to make that five times four because it's five times X. Um, so I want you to plug in x's everywhere in the original equation. You don't have to move anything around. Just in the original equation, plug in the number that you found for x anywhere you see an x. And then I want you to figure out what the left side ends up being equal to and figure out what the right side ends up being equal to. And if they're the same, then you've done it right. If they're not the same, you've made a mistake somewhere, either in your original working through of the answer or in checking the answer. So. Uh, there is an extra couple of steps of calculation that you're doing, so it's another couple of extra steps where you could make a mistake, but uh, it's a really handy tool to be able to check that you got the right answer without needing an answer key. You don't have to look in the back of a textbook. You don't need to ask me. You don't need to ask your other teachers that are there. You can just check for yourself that, yes, this answer is right and it makes sense. So what we're going to do is instead of going through all the work, we're just going to check that these answers make sense. So for this first one, if I plug in a 4 everywhere, We've got 5 times 4, that's 20, minus 4. 20 minus 4 is 16. So the left side here is 16. The right side is going to be 4 plus 12, which is also 16. So we're good with the first one. X is going to be equal to 4 because it ends up saying 16 is equal to 16, which is true. In the second one, X equals minus 2. So on the left side, we've got a negative sign in front of the X. So negative, negative 2 is actually positive 2, because this is like saying negative 1 times x. Negative 1 times negative 2, and in, any negative times a negative is going to give you a positive. So this is negative 1 times negative 2, that's positive 2. And then over here, we've got 6 times negative 2, which is negative 12, because positive times a negative equals a negative. So 6 times negative 2 is going to be negative uh, 12 plus 14. Negative 12 plus 14 is going to be plus 2. So we've got po uh, positive 2 plus 2 on the left side and on the right side, so we're good here. This third one, um, I've put in this multiplication sign just to kind of throw you off a little bit. It doesn't need to be there, and it's actually probably a bad thing that it is there. Um, but I threw it in there just so you could see for yourselves that uh, it's... A little bit annoying if you've got x's and then also multiplication signs so 
I thought I'd let you see that once. But so let's plug in this 2.5 or this 2.5 um, for x right in there. So if we do that, then we have inside the brackets first, because bed mass, uh, 2.5 plus 2, that's going to be 4.5. And then 4.5 times 4, if you do that calculation, you will find that it is indeed equal to 18. So this one's good as well. This fourth one, x equals negative 2.5. On the left side, that's going to be 7 minus negative 2.5. So that's 7 plus 2.5. So that's 9.5 on this side. And then 12 plus negative 2.5. That's just 12 minus 2.5, which is also 9.5. So this one's good too. And this last one, the reason I've written it as a fraction is that if you were to go through this work, the easiest thing you're going to get is you're going to move this one to that side. It's going to become 2 plus 1 is going to be 3. And then you're going to divide both sides by 90, and you're just going to see x is equal to 1 over 30. It's not convenient to write as a decimal, so that's why I left it as a fraction. But if we plug this fraction back in, that's going to be 90 times 1 over 30. So that's the same thing as 90 divided by 30, which is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. So there's the checks. So where we got everything right. So I hope you guys did too. So now we're going to do an example of a word problem, and then I'm going to give you guys two word problems that you can work through on your own, and I will show you the answers at the end of those. So first one, Luca wants to buy a few new pairs of shoes. When he goes to the store, the owner tells him that for each pair of shoes that he buys, he's going to earn 15 store points, like store credit points that he can eventually use to get a pair of shoes for free. So this is the kind of thing that you start seeing a lot of stores do and like pizza places and stuff that, you know, you buy six pizzas, you get the seventh one free or whatever, right? So this is kind of like that, uh, except it's by points. So the store owner tells him that you need 120 points in order to get a free pair of shoes. So every pair of shoes you buy, you get 15 points. And then once you have 120 points, you can get a free pair of shoes. The question is, how many pairs of shoes do you need to buy in order to get that free pair, in order to get to 120 points? So let's go through this together. So first things first, we can see that the number of pairs of shoes you buy, so for every single one pair of shoes that you buy, you get 15 points. So that means that the points that you earn is going to be equal to the pairs of shoes that you buy, the number of pairs of shoes, rather, that you buy, times 15, right? Because for every pair of shoes you get, you get 15 points. So the points is going to be equal to the pairs of shoes times 15. Now, here's the thing. Here's where it gets interesting uh, to the, with the wording that I chose for this question. So the points, I called that in the question, I call that store points, right? So you could label that P for points or S for store points. And then you're buying pairs of shoes, which you could label S for shoes or P for pairs of shoes. So this is where something really useful comes in handy when you're doing word problems. And this is something that will be a requirement on tests, tests and quizzes and homework that's involving word problems. Anything that's going to be marked by one of your teachers, somebody who's not you, you have to write something that's called a let statement. So what that means is you say let and then you pick whatever letter you want to use. So let's say let P be. And then you have to tell me what P stands for, because it could be pairs of shoes, it could be points, it could be potatoes. I don't know what you're talking about. So you need to tell me, let P be the number of points, okay? And let S be the number of pairs of shoes. So this is something that you have to write, and you don't have to pick like logical letters. You don't have to say P for points. You could have done A and B, you could have done X and Y. You can do whatever you want, but you have to tell whoever's reading your work what those numbers are because otherwise we're going to have different or what those letters represent rather um because otherwise you're going to have different letters floating around and then it's not going to be clear what's what so we have to write this let statement so i'm saying let p be the number of points and s be the number of pairs of shoes so with that we can rewrite this first equation this points equals pairs of shoes times 15. so this is points p equals s that's the pairs of shoes times 15 but then of course once we start putting letters in we don't have to write in the multiplication sign so we can say p equals 15 s and it's just good practice if you've got letters and numbers being multiplied together put the numbers first and the letters after so that's why i didn't write s 15 i wrote 15 s so p equals 15 s fantastic 
Now, in order to get a free pair of shoes, this is the the trickiest part of the problem, I think, is you've got this P equals 15 S. It looks like we've got two different letters in here. But actually, we know that in order to get the free pair of shoes, you need 120 points. So we can say, well, P is the number of points. S is the number of pairs of shoes. And we're trying to figure out what S is. We're trying to figure out what is that number of pairs of shoes that you need to buy in order to get 120 points. So because we're fixing that number at we're trying to get to 120 points, we can say this left side, this P, is just equal to 120. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, so if you do that, then this equation, instead of having a P on the left side, you'll have 120 on the left side equals 15S. So you see that if you look right here, 120 equals 15s. Now we've got just the one letter and we just need to figure out what that is. So this is what this equation is telling us. This is the points. This is the pairs of shoes. In order to get 120 points, how many pairs of shoes is that? That's what we're trying to solve here. And so you can solve that easily by dividing both sides by 15 and you'll end up finding that s is equal to 8. So if you buy 8 pairs of shoes, then uh, you'll be able to get a ninth pair of shoes for free. Now here's the last important thing you need to write when you're doing word problems is so first things first we've got the let statement so that you're telling everybody what the letters are equal to but then for clarity's sake at the end because you picked the letters and they didn't show up in the original question your final answer shouldn't be one of the letters that you picked your final answer should be a sentence so because you picked the letters yourself instead of saying s equals eight okay I'm done you have to write a final statement, a final statement, which we call a therefore statement. So you say, therefore, Luca needs to buy eight pairs of shoes to get another pair for free. So I hope that makes sense. Um, this word problem is not the most difficult. The trickiest thing I would say is recognizing that you can turn this P for points into 120. So let me know if that was too hard, too easy, or just about right, and we will move on. So next one is you've got uh, an interesting situation here. So the Math Olympiad Committee, some fancy international organization, has asked your class to represent the Dominican Republic at the World Math Olympiad. They say that the students who are present for today's class will receive a 50% discount on the entry fee, which is normally 500 pesos. Write an expression showing the relationship between the entry fee and the number of students present for today's class and then solve that equation based on how many students are in class today. So basically what you have to do, if we think back to the last question where we wrote down, based on the information that we were given, we wrote down P equals 15 S. That's as far as you're being asked to go in the first part where it says write an expression showing the relationship. That's saying, tell me how the entry fee is related to um, the number of students that are in class today. So that's your first step. And then the second step is solve that equation based on literally count how many students are in class with you right now and then solve the equation based on that. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to pause and then a few minutes to work on that. All right, so now let's go through the solution. So first things first, the entry fee we've been told is normally 500 pesos. But because there's a 50% discount for all of you who are in class today, it becomes half of that, right? 50% is half. So half of 500 pesos is 250 pesos. So now we know that that is the entry fee for each student. So now I'm going to write my let statement. I'm going to say let E be the entry fee and let N, lowercase n, be the number of students that are present for today's class. So we know that for every student that's present, the entry fee is going to be 250 pesos. So what we can say then is E, the entry fee, is going to be equal to the number of students, N, times 250 pesos. Right. So that's the expression that I was asking for right here, right? An expression showing the relationship between the entry fee and the number of students. That's this. That's E equals 250 N. So the number of students times 250 pesos, that's the total entry fee for the students present today. Now, here's the interesting part and showing the 
utility of using letters to represent numbers that you don't know is that I don't actually know how many of you are in class today. So I can't actually do this last part of solving the equation. You guys have to look around the room, figure out what n is equal to, the number of students present. It could have been s, it could have been something else for you guys. But what I've chosen to be n, the number of students present, look around the room, see how many of you are there, plug that number in and figure out what the entry fee would be for all of you in today's class. So I can't do that for you. So I'm just going to leave that as an exercise for you guys. So once you guys have done that, we can move on to word problem number two. So hopefully you didn't have any problems with the last one. Um, now we're going to do another one, which is also just an interesting situation. So uh, a toll highway in Honduras charges the following amounts in Honduran Lempiras for different types of vehicles. So uh, a toll highway, so that's a road that you, for those of you that might not know, that's a road that you drive on that you have to pay to drive on that road, basically. So every time a vehicle goes on that road, they have to pay a certain amount of money at a little booth um, for being able to use that road. So um, a toll highway, so that's a toll highway in Honduras. So somebody's somewhere driving in Honduras and they're on this highway. And depending on the type of vehicle that they're driving, it could be a small, lightweight car, it could be a big heavy transport truck, depending on the vehicle that you're driving, there's a different toll. Um, so a particular company, they want to send out a few vehicles, they're making some delivery or something, uh, going from one city to another, and they have to use this toll highway. And they've got, and now we got to look at this table down here, because I've said a company sends two vehicles from the second category. What's the second category? That's this thing right here, this T02B uh, vehicles with two axles, um, they have, so they're in this category, and so they have to pay a toll of 90 lempiras. That's the L in lempiras. So that is the toll for each of the two vehicles from that second category. So that's like maybe a small truck, right? They end up, uh, so, so firstly, they send these two trucks, right? And so each truck has to pay a toll of 90 lempiras. Then, they also send a few cars along. Maybe there's some important people that have to go for the, some meeting or, you know, security for the delivery or whatever it is, right? Um, some number of cars. We don't know how many cars. But what we do know is that the company ends up having to pay a total of 356 lempiras in tolls. So they've got these two, like, trucks, which are each paying a toll of 90 lempiras. And then they've got some cars where all the cars individually have to pay a toll of 22 lempiras. And what we know is, we know there are two trucks. We know uh, what the toll is for each truck. We know what the toll is for each car. And we know what the total toll paid is. The question is, how many cars used the toll highway? And now you might not be happy with the numbers being this high or like this weird and they're not rounded and stuff. This is real data. I took this data from a Honduran website. These are the actual numbers on this particular highway that I was looking for. So I will give you guys a few minutes to try and solve this and then we will go through the answer. All right, so let's go through the answer. I've just moved that table out of the way so that we've got some room to actually write on the slide. So what do we know? We know that each vehicle from that second category, like the small truck, let's say, has to pay a toll of 90 lempiras. So the total toll from those two vehicles alone is going to be 90 lempiras times 2. So that's 180. So that's what we've got here. We also know that each car in the first category right the like just the little cars they each have to pay a toll of 22 lempiras but we don't know how many cars have gone on the highway that's what we have to figure out so i'm going to say let's see lowercase c be the number of cars that paid a toll on the highway so we know that the total toll paid came out to 356 lempiras so we know that this total of 
356 lempiras is equal to the toll paid by the trucks plus the toll paid by all the cars, right? So we know that 356 lempiras, that's the total toll paid, is the toll of the trucks, right? So that's 90 lempiras times two trucks, so that's 180, plus 22 lempiras per car times the number of cars. And we need to figure out that number of cars. So what we want to figure out is what C is equal to from this equation. So the tricky part is always figuring out how to take the information that you've been provided and then coming up with that little algebraic expression. Because now you guys have seen the examples. This is not that hard to solve, right? The numbers are a little bit big and a little bit awkward, but the steps are pretty straightforward now, hopefully. The challenging part with the word problems is figuring out how to take all that information you've been given. Toll highway in Honduras. Do we care that it's in Honduras? Not really. Um, but I just put that in because that's where I got the data from. So um, 356 lempiras, that's the total, is equal to 180 lempiras, that's the total of the two trucks, plus 22 per car times C, the number of cars. So if we solve for C, we'll get that first things first, we move the 180 over to the other side. So we're like subtracting 180 from both sides. So we are left with uh, 176 on the left side is equal to just 22C on the right side. Then we divide both sides by 22. So we get 176 over 22 is equal to C, the number of cars. And if you do that calculation, you'll find that the answer is 8. Therefore, we find that 8 cars used the toll highway. So I hope that makes sense. Um, there was quite a bit I wanted to cover, and I wanted to make sure I gave you guys some time to go through the questions as well. So that's why I maybe went a little bit faster um, than I otherwise would have. But I hope all of this has made sense. Um, if you have any questions, of course, let me know in the comments or through WhatsApp or Instagram. And that is all that we're going to talk about for today's class. Um, I'm hoping to hopefully hear some feedback soon on how you guys found that. Uh, and then next week, because this is Thursday's video, if yes, this is the video for Thursday's class. Um, next week, we will do some more practice problems uh, to get a little bit more comfortable with like the word problems and stuff. And then we will start diving into problems with two variables. So you could have seen maybe like in this cars and trucks situation where if we didn't know the number of cars or the number of trucks, then that's two variables all of a sudden. And so we're going to look at how we could solve problems like that. But that's a problem for next week. Uh, I hope you guys found today's class um, a decent challenge, but not impossible. And uh, I hope you guys get to rest and relax over the weekend, and I will see you next video. Have a good one.